Hello, my name is Nigel Thorne, and I'm concerned about the dismissal of parental concerns that have been raised regarding the Welsh RSE code guidance and associated educational material. Many people are concerned about the teaching of gender identity ideology and the teaching that may prematurely sexualise children. In the summer of 2022, there was a virtual summer conference held by the Central South Consortium, a body with responsibility for providing training for teachers in the local authority areas of Bridgend, Cardiff, Merthyr, Rhondda and Taff and Vale of Glamorgan. A keynote presentation during the conference was delivered by Professor E.J. Reynolds, who steered delegates to the use of the CRUSH resource, a resource that apparently is currently being updated to align with the RSE code. So the CRUSH resource is um, an evolving resource. We are currently in the process of updating that resource in alignment with the new RSE code, including work on the three strands. And look at the CRUSH resource for something more bespoke for Wales um, that reflects and and, um, shares um, how we are working with teachers Um, on their journey to prepare for the new statutory relationships and sexuality education. Many of the organisations and much of the material referenced in CRUSH has caused concern in many quarters. In June 2022, Miriam Cates MP criticised many of the organisations and much of the material currently being used in schools, many of which are referenced in the CRUSH resource. And now children across the country are being exposed to a plethora of deeply inappropriate, wildly inaccurate, sexually explicit and damaging materials in the name of sex education. This is extremely concerning for a number of reasons. Firstly, if we fail to teach children clearly and factually about relationships, sex and the law, they will be exposed to all sorts of risks. For example, if you define sex as anything that makes you horny or aroused the definition offered by the sex education provider, the School of Sexuality Education, how does a child understand the link between sex and pregnancy? The Sex Education Forum tells children they fall into one of two groups, menstruators or non-menstruators. If a teenage girl's periods don't start, what will she think? How does she know this isn't normal? How does she know to consult a doctor? How will she know she's not pregnant? Will she just assume she's one of the non-menstruators? The book for teachers, Great Relationships and Sex Education, suggests an activity for 15-year-olds where children are given prompt cards and have to say whether they think certain types of sexual acts are good or bad. How do the children know which acts come with risks of health, health risks or risks of pregnancies or STDs? If we tell children that love has no age, the slogan used in a diversity role models resource, do we undermine their understanding of the legal age of consent? Sex education provider Bish informs children that most people would say they had a penis and testicles or a clitoris and a vagina. However, many people are in the middle of the spectrum with how their bodies are configured. Now, as a former biology teacher, I don't even know where to start with that one. As adults, we often fail to remember what it's like to be a child, and we make the mistake of assuming that children know more than they do. But children have all sorts of misconceptions, and that's why it's our responsibility to teach them factually, truthfully, and in age-appropriate ways so that they can make informed decisions. Another concern relates to the teaching of consent. Of course, it's vitally important to teach about consent, and the Everyone's Invited revelations make this abundantly clear. But we must remember that under the law, children can't consent to sex. Sex education classes conducted by the group It Happens told boys of 13 and 14 that the law is not there to punish young people for having consensual sex. It's just two 14-year-olds who want to have sex with each other and who are consensually having sex. It's not hard to see the risks of this approach, which normalises and legitimises underage sex. Not only are children legally not able to consent, they also don't have the developmental maturity or capacity to consent to sexual activity. That is the point of the age of consent. The introduction of graphic or extreme sexual material in sex education lessons also reinforces the porn culture that is damaging our children in such a devastating way. Of course, it is not the fault of schools that half of all 14-year-olds have seen pornography online, 
much of it violent and degrading. But some RSE lessons are actively contributing to the sexualisation and adultification of children. The Proud Trust has produced a dice game encouraging children to discuss explicit sexual acts based on the role of a dice. The six sides of the dice name different body parts, such as anus, vulva, penis, mouth and objects. Two dice are thrown and children must name a pleasurable sexual act that can take place between those two body parts. The game is aimed at children of 13 and over. SexWise is a website run and funded by the Department for Health and recommended in the Department for Education's RSE guidance. The website is promoted in schools and contains the following advice. Maybe you read a really hot bit of erotica while looking up dominance and submission. Remember, sharing is caring. Sex education materials produced by BISH training involve discussion of a wide range of sexual practices, some of them violent. This includes rough sex, spanking, choking, BDSM and kink. BISH is aimed at young people of 14 and over and provides training materials for teachers. In May 2023, Tanya Carter from Safe Schools Alliance referred to the material produced by BISH while giving evidence in Parliament to the Women and Equalities Select Committee. She was questioned by Carolyn Harris, the Deputy Leader of Welsh Labour. Purposes here, what you're describing is what I consider to be appropriate education. The concerns I'm raising is that this is not what some of the RSE going into school is these days. What you're describing is what I would expect to be going into schools. That is not what's going into schools. Of course, children should be told what the age of consent is, and that after the age of consent, if they engage in engage in oral sex. Yes, there's a risk of STI, but we're talking about providers who are graphically describing online to 14-year-olds how to deep throat. And that is fact. You have factual information. Yes, we do. And and where does that come from, that that, information? That that came from BISH. It was on their website. From BISH, an organisation called BISH. Yeah. We have loads of... They are that's used in schools. Um, They are directed to it in schools. What would... This is one of the main... Are they taught it in schools? Are they actually... Is that school actually delivering what Beach are offering? I don't think you're understanding the safeguarding implications of schools directing children to sites where they are told this. No more questions for now, thank you. Okay, thank you. Even when materials are not extreme, we must still be careful not to sexualise children prematurely. I spoke to a mother who told me how her 11-year-old son have been shown a PowerPoint in a lesson on sexuality, setting out characteristics and behaviours and asking children to read through the lists and decide if they were straight, gay or bisexual. Prepubescent 11-year-olds are not straight, gay or bisexual. They are children. And even school's Diversity Week, a celebration of LGBTQIA+, promoted by the Just Like Us group, leads to the sexualisation of children. Of course schools should celebrate diversity and promote tolerance. But why are we doing this by asking pre-sexual children to align themselves with adult sexual liberation campaigns? And let's not forget that the plus includes kink, BDSM and fetish. But even primary schools aren't immune from using inappropriate materials. An All About Me programme developed by Warwickshire County Council's Respect Yourself team introduces six and seven-year-olds to rules about touching yourself. I recently spoke to a mother in my constituency who was distraught that her six-year-old had been taught about masturbation in school. Sexualising children, encouraging them to talk about intimate details with adults, breaks down important boundaries and makes them more more susceptible and available to sexual predators, both on and offline. Another significant concern is the use of RSE to push extreme gender ideology. Gender ideology is a belief system that claims that we all have an innate gender that may or may, may or may not align with our biological sex. Gender ideology claims that rather than sex being determined at conception and observed at birth, it is assigned at birth and that doctors sometimes get it wrong. Gender theory sadly has sexist and homophobic undertones, pushing outdated gender stereotypes and suggesting to, to, suggesting to same-sex attracted adolescents that instead of being gay or lesbian, they may in fact be the opposite sex. And gender theory says that if you feel like a woman, you are a woman, regardless of your chromosomes, your genitals, regardless, in fact, of reality. 
Now, gender ideology is highly contested. It doesn't have a basis in science, and no one had heard of it in this country just 10 years ago. And yet it's been pushed on children in some schools under the guise of RSE with what can only be described as a religious fervour. DfE guidance states that schools should not reinforce harmful stereotypes, for instance by suggesting that children might be a different gender. And resources used in teaching about this area must be evidence-based. And yet a video produced by the Amaze group and used in schools suggests that boys who wear nail varnish or girls who like weightlifting might actually be the opposite sex. Resources by Brooke claim man and woman are genders. They are social ideas about how people who have vulvas and vaginas and people who have penises and testicles should behave. The Split Banana Group offers workshops to schools where children learn ideas of how gender is socially constructed and explore links between the gender binary and colonialism. A gendered intelligent workshop tells children that a woman is still a woman, even if she enjoys getting blowjobs. Just Like Us tells children that their biological sex can be changed. The PSHE Association resources inform children that people whose gender matches the sex they were assigned at birth are described as cisgender. And gender theory is even being taught to our very youngest children. The Popanoli group tells children that gender is male, female, both or neither. The Introducing Teddy book, aimed at primary school children, tells the story of Teddy, who changes sex, illustrated by the transformation of his bow tie into a hair bow. The Diversity Role Models primary training workshop uses the gender unicorn, a cartoon unicorn who explains that there is an additional biological sex category called other. Numerous resources from numerous sex education providers present gender theory as fact, contrary to DfE guidance. But it's not just factually incorrect resources that are making their way into schools. Visitors from external agencies are invited in to talk to children about sex and relationships sometimes even without a teacher present in the room. Guidance says that when using external agencies, schools should check their material in advance and conduct a basic online search. But a social media search of organisations such as diversity role models reveals links to drag queens with highly sexualised, porn-inspired names, or in the case of mermaids, the promotion of political activism, which breaches political impartiality guidelines. In some cases, children are disadvantaged when they show signs of dissent from gender ideology, as we saw in the recent case reported in the press of a girl who was bullied out of school for questioning gender theory. I've spoken to parents of children who've been threatened with det detention if they misgender a trans-identifying child or who complain about the child of the opposite sex in their changing rooms. I've heard from parents whose child was marked down on their homework for not adhering to this new creed in their RSE work. Children believe what adults tell them. They're biologically programmed to do so. How else does a child learn the knowledge and the skills they need to grow and develop and be prepared for adult life? It's therefore the duty of those responsible for raising children, particularly parents and teachers, to tell children the truth. Those who teach a child that there are 64 different genders, that they may actually be a different gender to their birth sex, that they may have been born in the wrong body, are not telling the truth. And it's a tragedy that the RSE curriculum, which should be helping children to develop confidence and self-respect, is instead being used to undermine reality and ultimately put children in danger. Now, some may ask what harm is being done by presenting these ideas to children. And of course it is right to teach children to be tolerant, kind and accepting of others. But it's not compassionate, wise or legal to teach children that contested ideologies are fact. That's indoctrination, and it's becoming very evident that there are some quite concerning consequences. In the crush resource, a recommended organisation is Mermaids. In December 2022, it was announced that Mermaids would be investigated by the Charity Commission. Trans youth charity Mermaids are being investigated by the Charity Commission for unethical practices. An article in The Telegraph revealed red flags in its dealings with children. The charity are accused of sending controversial breast-binding devices to children as young as 13 without their parents' knowledge. A statement from the Charity Commission read, Concerns have been raised with us about Mermaid's approach to safeguarding young people. We have opened a regulatory compliance case and have written to the trustees. We now await their reply. I'm joined now by the author and director of advocacy for campaign group Sex Matters, Helen Joyce. Thank you for joining me, Helen. 
Um, a lot of people watching might not know what mermaids are or what they do, so perhaps you can help fill us in on that. So they started out as a pa pa parents' self-help group. They were a really small little charity, and I think they did good work. Mm. You know, parents whose children are gender dysphoric or who say that they're trans, that was a tiny number of kids 15, 20 years ago, but a very difficult situation to be in. And then they kind of, you know, grew like Topsy and turned into something completely different, which is an ideological group that's pushing gender identity as the explanation for everything. You know, they lobbied quite hard for a very different and very aggressive approach to medical treatment for trans kids. Uh, you know, they, they um, produce uh, materials for schools. They go in, they train teachers. They tell teachers to tell kids that what makes you a boy or a girl is how you perform gender stereotypes and so on. And most recently, they've taken a legal case against the Charity Commission for accepting the registration of the LGB Alliance, which is a charity that represents anyone who's same-sex attracted or bisexual, but not the whole gender identity stuff. In October 2022, it was reported that a trustee of Mermaids, Jacob Breslow, had resigned after reports that he spoke at a conference organised by a group that promotes support for paedophiles. In a thesis submitted for a doctorate in philosophy titled The Theory and Practice of Childhood, Interrogating Childhood as a Technology of Power, the author described his experience of seeing a 12-year-old boy dancing in a sexually provocative manner. As his movements transitioned from those that mimicked breakdancers to those that mimicked sex acts, repeating the easily citational gesticulations of pelvic thrusts, the cheers became a murmur. In the moment of those thrusts, the room itself was pushed into a collective effect of discomfort and anxiety, completely unsure of what to make of this performance before us. I, on the other hand, find myself caught up in the exhilarating waves of memory, identification and desire. A wish. A wish that I could have been this boy. A hope that this boy will have and will be all that I desire for him. And a desire for him himself. To be next to him and maybe to dance with him. In the thesis, Breslow writes approvingly of Professor E.J. Reynold. Reynold privileges childhoods and sexuality's co-construction. Reynold, outlining the theoretical frame that guides her ethnographic work with children, argues that one of her projects is the queering of childhood. This, she argues, is a mode of paying attention to the multiple and contradictory ways in which sexuality is constitutive of both the subject child and the social and cultural institution of childhood. I will spend more time theorising the potentials and limits of a queering of childhood in Chapter 5, but I mention Reynolds' frame of queering here because it firmly entangles children's lives and everyday practices within a dynamic relationship to the varied and contested ways sexuality constitutes and is constituted by childhood. In 2011, Breslow attended a symposium organised by B4U Act, an organisation that purports to educate mental health professionals and society about paedophilia and to suggest therapeutic support to other self-identified adults and adolescents who desire sex with children. A report of the symposium was given by Judith Reisman. Before You Act claims its mission is to merely eliminate the stigma against paedophilia by removing what they call the tremendous barriers to communication among paedophiles, mental health professionals and the public. To facilitate these ends, they hold workshops and other gatherings to allegedly promote dialogue. Reisman writes... He analogised asking a shoe if it wants to be worn to asking a child if he or she wants to have sex, stating that the manner in which it is asked must not require an answer, or again, at least not one which is conventionally intelligible or audible. Jacob Breslow argued that just as the desire to and act of reaching sexual climax upon a shoe required a rethinking of the shoe and how it comes into being. So does the desire to and the act of reaching sexual climax upon or with a child require a rethinking of both the child and of the person for whom the child is a sexual fantasy or partner. 
Professor E.J. Reynolds of Cardiff University and Dr. Esther McGinney from the University of Sussex are training teachers in the Central South Consortium. So we've recently published um, a number of resources and we have an ongoing programme of professional development around RSE um, provided by not only our lead practitioners, but our, um, our external providers, Professor Reynolds from, from Cardiff University, who is providing a keynote um, presentation later on today, and uh, Dr. McGinney from the University of Sussex to support schools. In 2013, Dr. McGinney presented her paper for a doctorate in philosophy. The paper, sponsored by Brooke, was titled What is Good Sex? Young People, Sexual Pleasure and Sexual Health Services. Dr. McGinney is supportive of the demolition of social taboos and the progression of a sexual revolution. She is an admirer of Michel Foucault, commonly regarded as the grandfather of queer theory. McGinney writes... Allen and Carmody suggest that what is required in sexuality education is not a standardised or regulatory set of ideas about what pleasure is, but a concept of pleasure as a site of possibility and resistance with transformative and radical potential. To develop this concept theoretically, the authors draw on the suggestion in Foucault's work that pleasure has more transformative potential than desire, because desire is tied to identity, expressed for someone or for some act in a way that reveals what one really wants, who one really is. Pleasure, on the other hand, is an event outside of the subject or at the limit of the subject in something which is neither of the body nor of the assignable. For Allen and Carmody, it is this capacity of pleasure to be disruptive and unassignable that makes it potentially useful for creating educational spaces for imagining sexuality in ways that are not bound by limited heteronormative gender and sexual identities. In 2021, French professor Guy Sorman alleged that Foucault sexually abused boys when he lived in Tunisia. As part of the new curriculum, schools will teach sexual pleasure from the age of 11. In September 2022, Conservative Senate member Laura Ann Jones questioned Jeremy Miles on the RSE code guidance and supporting educational material. Jeremy Miles stated that those who expressed concerns were spreading misinformation. Plaid Cymru spokesperson for education, Helith Vucken, agreed. 
questions now from party spokespeople. Conservative spokesperson Laura Jones. <coughs> Dear Clower, <coughs> Minister, I stood here back in 2021 when I first came to the Senate, the last Senate, um, and whilst on Education Committee, I came late to the review, but I listened to the evidence and believed the government when they said they wanted to change RSE, which was desperately needed uh, for the better. I relayed my own experience of RSE and alongside many, which alongside many others highlighted the real need for change in this area. It was strongly agreed by all that what was delivered needed to be factual and most importantly age appropriate. I even spoke on the issue of RSE within my weeks of my return and back then I said I was at first sceptical and uncomfortable with the idea of my 10-year-old son being taught RSE at that sort of level, but having taken the evidence and listened to people throughout the committee process of scrutinising this, I'm now comfortable with what my son would potentially be taught. Years down the line, it would appear my original concerns have now come to fruition. What we are seeing is children and young people that are being exposed to material that's not age-appropriate and has already having a negative impact and effect on our young people. Perhaps the RSE code is too flexible, Minister, too open to differing delivery and focus per school across Wales. Minister, you've had the, you have the opportunity to streamline the guidance to protect and educate our children with fact and information that does as what it was initially tended to do to provide our children with information that they need to navigate their ways through confusing times and developing into an adult and all that goes with that. Do you not agree, Minister, that guidance perhaps is too loose and to date is not ensuring that safe, fact-based information is promised to our young people uh, to ensure fulfilling and safe relationships is in fact being delivered? Well, it is very important that young people in Wales uh, are given an education which enables them to navigate the world in which we live and understand the challenges which young people face, which certainly I didn't face uh, when I was at their age, and that is the underlying purpose and effect of the Relationship and sexual education, Sexuality Education Code uh, and Guidance. The member will be very well aware that there is a public debate uh, fermented by many who are keen to share m- misinformation in relation to the effect of the Code and Guidance, and I would have hoped that she might have been able to resist the temptation of lending weight to that misleading set of claims. Uh, The code is very clear, and in the way that she said in her question, is very specific about the limitations and restrictions and requirements which apply to the teaching of RSE at different uh, developmental stages. I would invite any member, or indeed any member of the public, with an interest in this area to read the code itself, uh, and not to believe some of the claims that are being made about it. Uh, it's an area of great sensitivity, um, and I find it just implausible. The member claims that this, in, this is already something which uh, she is uh, concerned about. We are two weeks into the introduction of the new curriculum. So the material which is being talked about by some of the groups uh, which are seeking to misrepresent the position uh, simply is not the product of the Welsh education system. Uh, and I hope that she will find a way of uh, distancing herself from those claims. I do not marry myself with those comments. I'm talking for, to, as, an, as a parent myself of a nearly teenager and from what I've heard um, up and down Wales. And like many parents up and down Wales, I feel tremendously let down so far from what I'm hearing is being delivered on the ground. What is happening, I fear, is happening the opposite effect of what was intended, and we all wanted the same thing. In fact, there's an adverse effect, seemingly already damaging effect, on some children. In reality, some seeing what is being taught as a joke because it has gone to extremes, ridiculous, and it has increased some bullying. And this is what I'm hearing from children. It's hugely disappointed that the fact-based, appropriate learning that was wanted and needed is not being delivered. Minister, will you commit, will you, will you c- commit to reviewing the RSE content that is being taught in Wales and give us a, a, an idea of how it's being delivered and what in fact is being delivered as we go through this term? Thank you. The generic nature of the members' uh, allegations, the lack of specificity, the broad brush approach which is taken to this question is incredibly unhelpful. The curriculum has been taught for a matter of days, actually, in schools, so I would be interested in hearing from her, either in the chamber or separately, of the specifics to which she's referring. I think it's incumbent on all of us uh, to be cautious and careful about how we make allegations uh, in this place, and I certainly will not commit to reviewing the code. Uh, This code is a code which this Senev has endorsed, 
is being rolled out in schools in Wales is being done so by teachers who are committed to the well-being and welfare of the young people they are teaching. And I stand with them in making sure that those young people have access to a full curriculum designed to keep them safe and healthy. Uh, question in our Questions now from Plaid Cymru spokesperson Helen Vechan. Thank you, Hywydd, and thank you, Minister. I'd like to focus on relationships and sexuality education from a completely different angle. I'd like to welcome the written statement that you published over the summer regarding misleading allegations with regard to relationships and sexuality education. And it's a cause of regret that the opposition spokesperson has walked out with us, without us having this discussion now. I know that you have asked the group spreading these misleading allegations to cease sharing this misinformation. And I agree with what you said about this group's aggressive tactics. It is unfortunate the Welsh Government and Plaid Cymru prefer to throw slurs at parents who are concerned about the influence of queer theory on the Welsh RSC code guidance and educational materials in Wales. Those parents who would prefer that their child's childhood wasn't queered uh, may wish to support Public Child Protection Wales. Links are included below.